So I want to kick today's video off with a quick question for you. And I recognize this question is going to feel a little abrupt, maybe even confusing, but I promise you that by the very end of the video, it's all going to make sense. So I'm curious, do you know how to read a horizon chart? Now you might be thinking to yourself, yes, I use them all the time. Or maybe you're a little more on the fence and you're thinking, well, I've heard of them, but I don't use horizon charts frequently. Or maybe you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about and you're even more confused at this point. Any of those answers are valid. In fact, the most common response when I ask this question, yes, I ask it quite frequently, is the latter, right? People have no idea what a horizon chart is. And it's almost expected because a horizon chart is a novel chart type. Other charts that I would throw into this category are things like Mary Mecco charts, tornado plots, radial charts even, right? They're unfamiliar views. Benefit of using a novel or an unfamiliar view is that it's just different. Oftentimes it comes with unique shapes, bright colors, so it can be visually engaging. But the challenge is, is that when you try to extract meaning from a novel view, if you've never seen it, you might grow a little frustrated. In fact, that's usually what happens to me when I'm faced with an unfamiliar view. I start off thinking, all right, I can figure this out, but then I quickly get frustrated, right? Trying to make sense of the chart. That frustration eventually leads to a little bit of embarrassment, not always willing to admit that I have no idea how to read what's in front of me. So the takeaway here is to use simple charts, use them frequently, things like line charts and bar charts. That way you don't overwhelm your audience. But every once in a while, you may happen upon a scenario where you need to do something a little bit unique. In those instances, you want to take special care to not only get your message across, but also break down and teach your audience how to read what's in front of them. This was the theme of a talk that I did a while back called Presenting Novel Charts. And so I'm not going to share the entire talk with all of you. Uh, if you're interested in the full recording, it is available on our community site for premium members. I'll link all of that down below. But what I am going to share with you is that presentation of a horizon chart. Now, I'll admit it's a unique scenario. It's a fun topic even. And I'm going to watch it with you. And I want you to keep in the back of your head, what strategies am I using to help teach this chart type? Think through how you feel when I share some of these new views with you. And then at the very end, I want us to come back to that question that I kicked this video off. See if your knowledge of horizon charts has in fact increased. So let's go ahead and watch. So one of the major challenges within the food industry is constantly balancing food loss or trying to minimize this. In fact, some national estimates put the rate of food loss at 31%. That number alone is quite discouraging. But the good news is that at our organization, we make monitoring food loss a priority, which means we are regularly making optimizations, changes to our supply to ensure that we are just meeting consumer demand. In fact, when we take a look at our most recent loss rate over the past 60 days, our rates are markedly lower than this national estimate. We hover right around a 4% overall loss. Let's take a look at the data that supports this figure. And just to set things up for all of you, we're going to be looking at the proportion of overall bagel losses by day for the past 60 days. As you look at the structure of this graph here, you can see that loss rates can be both positive and negative. When I layer on the data, you're likely going to notice quite a bit of variation from day to day. This is totally normal here. In fact, we have some negative loss rates here, which just simply mean that we didn't produce enough bagels to meet consumer demand. But we also have quite a bit of positive daily loss rates, which means we produced too many bagels. We supplied our retailers with more bagels than consumers were willing to purchase. Now, when it comes to managing daily loss rates, we really have two main goals that we're trying to achieve. Challenge is, is these goals are competing with one another. So the first of those goals is to avoid extreme excess. 
So I should mention here that excess is not a bad thing. In fact, we have many programs in play to handle a surplus of bagels. Just to give you a sense, our supply chain runs full circle, which means not only do we deliver fresh bagels each day to all of our retailers, but we also arrange for transportation at the end of the day. So any extra bagels are collected, brought back to a facility where they can be reused and turned into crumbable products. These products then make the basis for many animal feeds. We also have employee perks at play, which means any products that couldn't be reused are available for workers to take home. A benefit, if you will, of working within the food industry. The challenge is, is that if we have too many bagels, then things become a loss. So to help us visualize this, I'm gonna layer on some banding onto this graph where you can see that that light gray, a loss rate from zero to 3% indicates minimal excess. Then we see that medium gray in the middle, which represents excess of three to 6%. Again, loss rates that we can typically handle through our programs of reusing products as well as employee benefits. Challenge is, is that when we start to exceed loss rates of 6%, that's where we just have too many bagels. And unfortunately, these likely become waste. This is problematic from a business perspective in the sense that it's a waste of our resources, but also it's harmful to the environment. So we're always trying to avoid excess. Second goal that we have to manage is always having availability. So feedback results have shown us that the number one cause of consumer dissatisfaction, both at the retailer and the customer level, is lack of availability, which means we try to avoid this at all costs, making sure that our bagel products are always available for consumers that want to purchase them, which means we never want to have a negative loss day. Or if you're looking at the visual in front of you, we never want to be in the red. So the main takeaway here is that excess is good, but not too much. And so this is a challenging thing to achieve. So we've just released brand new reporting to help you accomplish this and optimize our loss rates. Challenge is these reports make use of a view that is a little bit more complicated to consume. So what I wanna do here is step you through how to read this chart, as well as share some insights that we've already identified. So to make my explanation a bit simpler, I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these surrounding details. Things like the title, the access labels, that way we can just focus on the data here. Now I want you to imagine that I'm going to take this graph and just like a piece of paper, I'm going to fold it in half, where I'm taking that bottom half of the graph and I'm folding it upwards so that all of those red bars that you see in front of you are now on the top can almost think of this as plotting the absolute values of loss rates. Then I'm going to take each of the three bands that you see on the screen, the lightest saturation, the medium saturation, and the darkest intensity that you see, and I'm gonna slide them down to that zero baseline so that ultimately I am layering the colors on top of one another with the highest extremes visible on top. And now what we have is the makings of a horizon chart. Now, if I add back in those details, align things, format, add a color legend, it's going to look like this. And this is actually one of the horizon charts directly from the reports that we're going to share with you. And horizon charts are incredibly powerful for spotting quick patterns, especially across a number of dimensions, which means that now you have the ability not only to monitor loss rates at an overall level, but dive into some of the details. For instance, let's compare loss rates across various bagel flavors, starting with our top two standard bagels, plain bagels, everything bagels. And notice the patterns that you see. Now, when you're reading this horizon chart here, notice that you're just looking for this overall pattern. Ideally, what I want you to see is a light gray pattern, which means that for most days over the past 60 day period, you're seeing excess or loss rates between zero and 3%. Now, no, you will always see variation in front of you, but again, you're looking for these high level trends or patterns. So use these examples in front of you here as a model to then process some of the other horizon charts for various flavors. For instance, let's take a look at some of our specialty bagels. And when we do that, you're likely going to notice 
that there are some extreme patterns being shown here. For instance, let's take a look at cinnamon raisin bagels. Notice the red pattern that you see in front of you. This tells us that there were multiple days over the past 60 day period where we were not producing enough bagels. Demand is higher than our supply. Let's compare that to another flavor like jalapeno cheddar. Notice the difference here. This horizon chart is much more intense. There are so many bands of black in front of us, but intermixed with red, which tells us that demand for jalapeno cheddar bagels is quite varied, but also that we have a surplus of this specific flavor. So already notice how just quickly comparing these charts in front of you, you can identify quick optimizations you can make to our supply which is why I think we should have a discussion going forward about potentially making cinnamon raisin bagels a standard flavor. This will naturally increase our production of this bagel and therefore the supply to our retailers. I also think we need to look at reducing the overall production of jalapeno cheddar, maybe dive deeper into the specific retailers that are having that surplus. So hopefully you can see the benefit of the charts here in front of you. And following this meeting, all of you are going to have access to the specific reports that we're going to share with you. Now, just to give you a sense of what those reports are going to look like, you'll see many different horizon charts like what I've shared with you here today, where again, you can quickly scan for patterns. You can dive deep into the time periods, the retailers, the various bagel products that we provide. All right, you know what's coming next. I'm gonna ask you again, do you know how to read a horizon chart? Hopefully your answer is yes, or at a minimum, hopefully your confidence has improved now that I've talked you through how to read that chart type. I'm also curious, did you spot any strategies that you can use when presenting unfamiliar chart types? Wanna see if we can get a running list going in the comments down below. And if you're interested in how to improve your own presentation skills, I'm gonna recommend you subscribe and stay tuned to this channel because we are going to be releasing a ton of new resources on how to plan, create, and deliver a stellar presentation. My name's Alex, and I'll see you next time.